Good day. Uh, this is uh, Apex Telecom. Once again, uh, we've come to you with uh, a course so still under the 2G GSM Radio Access Network. So for today's uh, tutorials, we're going to have a, a brief look at uh, how the BTS is uh, configured to connect to the BSC. That is the various uh, configurations methodology that we use to configure the BTSs to the BSC. So kindly stay tuned as we go through this tutorial. Now, this chapter, uh, we're going to have a look at uh, the various factors to consider when uh, connecting the BTSs to the BSCs. So, basically, there are three factors that we can talk about. Uh, now, the first one you can talk about is the expected traffic levels that uh, you, are, you are going to run on the network. So, you need to take into consideration the the traffic as the size of a uh, traffic or volumes that are going to run on the network and then you need to also consider the type of bts's and then the, the bs's you are going to use on the run network that like for the 2g run network then then the third one is uh, you need to take into consideration the cost of uh, the transmission how much uh, uh, i mean how much is going to be involved in purchasing maybe transmission medium like the E1s and all that. So you need to take into consideration these particular uh, three steps. That's the first one is the expected traffic levels. The second one is what, the type of BTS and the BSC. And the third one is what the transmission cost. Now there are three main ways of connecting the BTSs to what the BSCs with a fourth one which is really used. So we are going to have a look at the the various uh, ways or the methodologies that we can actually configure the BTSs to the BSCs. Normally there are four, but three are the main ones that are commonly used by uh, network operators. Now this uh, chapter we are looking at the the various uh, uh, methods that. Uh, you can connect the BTSs to the BSCs. And the first one you can talk about is the star configuration. Uh, and that star configuration, it is, well, it is simple to implement and depending on the traffic load, consists of a minimum of one, two megabit per second path between each BTS and the BSC. So what this means is that basically the, the BTSs are arranged in the form of star. And they are connecting to a central point, which is what the BSC. Now, from the BSC to each of these BTSs is what uh, a two megabit per second uh, transmission medium, which is what the E1. That's one E1 connectivity. So we have a BTS uh, connecting toward the BSC with one E1 con uh, connection. So the BTS are all arranged in the form of what star, and then they connect to. Uh, a particular central node, which was the BSC. Now let's have a quick look at uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the, the the star configuration or the star topology. So uh, for the advantages, we we have the first one was easy to augment the routes. Okay, so the routes are easily what monitored. You can implement them easily with a star uh, connection, and then growth at one side has no impact on growth on the other side. So because all these uh, connections are uh, interdependent, uh, they are not depending on the other other uh, connections. Whatever happens on one connection connection does not affect the other connection, which is very good. Okay. Now, when there is a break in transmission, not all the BTSs are affected. Yes, because for instance, on our diagram, you can see there are, there are about uh, four BTSs going to the central uh, node, which is uh, the BSC. So 
if one uh, link goes down, the others can still operate or the others can still work. In terms of disadvantages, only one route exists between each BTS and the BSC. So if that link fails, the BTS also fails. So because all these uh, connections from the BTSs to the, to the BSCs, they do not depend on each other. If that link goes down, then the BTS also goes down. So that is one uh, typical disadvantage of this particular uh, connection. And then there's also an inefficient use of what? E1 links or E1 lines, okay? In terms of cost, for self-provided links, it may not be possible to achieve line of sight between every BTS and the BSC. So you can see from here, in terms of demerits or disadvantages, uh, in terms of routes, we, can, uh, we cannot be uh, sure of the routes. In terms of uh, E1 uh, efficiency use, we cannot be sure of that. And then it's also, sometimes it's also very costly because you have to spend a lot of money connecting many, many E1s to various BTSs in the network. Now, uh, our next uh, type of configuration is the, the, the ring uh, topology. So, under the ring topology, uh, each BTS has two routes to the BSC, and uh, that makes it more uh, reliable. So, you can see that from our diagram here, on the from each BT, uh, from each BTS, on the right side of each BTS, there is a link. Then on the left side, there is also another link. So uh, when the right side should to break down, the left side will take over. So basically, this makes the uh, the ring configuration uh, more reliable. So let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of the ring configurations. In terms of advantages, uh, each BTS has two routes and it is more reliable in case of any link failure. And then you are also assured of what redundancy. So if the left side of the, the link goes down, then the right side can take over. So when there is a break in transmission, not all the BTSs are also what affected, okay? In terms of disadvantages, there's also what inefficient use of what E1s. And sometimes it's also costly as you may have to what, connect more E1s in the network. Um, our third most important uh, configurations uh, from the BTS to the BSC is the serial configuration. And it's normally used on highways between cities or places in a straight line. So, for example, if you're on a highway and then you are moving from, let's say, city A, okay, and then city B is just like a continuous path along city A. So, normally, if you are trying to build up this kind of BTSs, you can what, build them in a serial form. So, it's going to be like a straight line, all right? So, you can see from our diagram here, we have like three BTSs which are connected through a central medium, just one line, and then connecting to the BSC. So in terms of the merits and demerits of the serial configuration, uh, for the merits, there is efficient use of E1 lines connecting a base station. So you can see from that diagram, that you don't need to spend a lot of money in uh, buying many E1s. You just one E1 link like this, it can connect all the BTSs in a straight path, all right? So for the disadvantage, there is no protection in case of link breakdown. So whenever there is a break in any part of this uh, transmission media, which is what the E1, there is a link failure and then service may be interrupted so that is for the disadvantage and then what the disadvantage uh, the advantage for the 
serial configuration. Now, our last uh, configuration methodology, which is rarely used by uh, network operators, and normally it's not all that common, it's just that these days some of the operators are, have started using this kind of uh, methodology. So it's just the combination of the, the ring configuration and the star configuration. So it's normally a combination of what the star and all the ring configurations. So from our diagram here, you can see that uh, below, below the, the diagram, you can see there are many BTSs which are connected to a particular equipment before connecting to the, the BSC. We have this equipment called what, the digital cross connect. So the digital cross connect is just like a transmission medium that uh, connects to many BTSs before it can connect to, to, the, to the BSC. So with this kind of device, you can connect many, many BTSs as much as possible. So from our, from our diagram, you can see uh, many BTSs are connected to our, our BSC through this uh, digital cross connect. And then from there, you can also connect to what? Another uh, digital cross connect then to the BSC. So with the ring star configuration, basically you can connect more BTS is into the network. So let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of the star ring uh, topology or the configurations. So in terms of the advantages, there is the introduction of the digital cross connect to real traffic where necessary. So what this uh, digital cross connect does is that it is connected in such a way that if you want to do traffic uh, dimensioning, okay? So you can see maybe 20% traffic will go to this particular uh, BSC. And then uh, from this uh, three B BTS, all the traffic will go to this particular BSC. So it helps to do traffic dimensioning so that the, we don't uh, put a lot of traffic on a particular uh, BS to avoid congestion and all that. Then the next one is also, there's also increase in capacity because it can take many BTS connections. So in terms of capacity, you are rest assured. Now, in terms of uh, the disadvantage, the failure of one digital cross connect may put some BTSs offline. So you, have, you may have many uh, digital cross connects. So if a particular digital cross connect connecting to many BSs, uh, many BTSs in a network, if that's a, uh, digital cross connect transmission uh, equipment goes down that means all the bts's which are connected to this particular uh, device will also be affected and that's a big disadvantage and then there's also inefficient use of um, e1s in the network uh, let's have a quick summary of what we've learned today so Basically, uh, we, we learned that uh, the BTSs can connect to the BSs using the star topology, the serial topology, or the ring topology. And then the fourth one that we can also talk about, which is very used by most uh, opcos, is uh, the, the combination of the star and ring topology. So with the star and ring topology, we have the introduction of what? The digital cross-connect uh, transmission uh, device. And then this helps us to integrate more uh, BTSs into the to the network. Now the main transmission medium used here to connect these BTSs to the BSs is uh, the, the, the E1s. And then the, with the E1s, what you can talk about is what? It can carry, or it has about what, 32 time slots, all right? So with the 32 time slots, uh, time slot zero is used for uh, synchronization or transmission uh, management and then time slot 60 is used for for signaling the other time slots are used to carry a uh, voice and then the data in the network depending on the dimension of the operator so i believe this training has really set a purpose uh, in your life so kindly go to our youtube channel uh, apex telecom and then uh, subscribe so as we bring you more videos 
any other day, you can have the notification. Have a great day and bye-bye from us. Thank you.